Hi, my name is Tom Gaskill, and I'm the Education Coordinator at South SLU National Estuarine Research Reserve, and we're in Charleston, Oregon. We're in the classroom at the reserve today, and what I want to share with you is a watershed in a box model that was built here at the reserve um, out of simple materials, and it takes uh, anywhere between two and four hours to put together. Um, the materials are really just a wooden box of the size that you desire. Uh, there's a piece of plywood for a base, and then I recommend three sides. Uh, these are one by sixes. They're just pine boards, and they're fastened together with uh, finish nails. They could be fastened together with screws if you wanted to be able to take the uh, model apart later on. And then they're affixed to the base, um, to the plywood. And again, uh, screws probably would be easiest, uh, something like drywall screws. <clears throat> the interior of the model uh, can be any shape that you want in terms of a watershed, but uh, typically what you want is some slopes and uh, something to represent the creek, and then uh, the flat or uh, wetland part of the model should have uh, some different colors to connotate different elements, uh, different pieces of the watershed. So in this case, we have upland hillsides uh, that are represented with the gray clay, and then this blue shows us where the creek is flowing, so it, it shows the sculpted hillside coming down and then flowing into the main body of the river. And the river is crossing into an estuary here. And so what we have are some lowlands. These would uh, usually represent marshes or meadows. And then uh, here's a salt marsh area. So this is an environment where the tide can flow in. And then we've got some mud flats here that are represented by this reddish clay. This is modeling clay, and modeling clay is an oil-based clay, so it's waterproof. And if I wanted to, I could pour water over this model. Of course, uh, unless you have a tilt to things, the water may pool up. And once you've poured water on it, it's going to take some time to dry out. But uh, the way this is done is the uplands are formed out of hardware cloth, uh, just this simple wire mesh. Uh, that is quite malleable and we shaped that into forms and we laid that in the box and then we used some sheetrock screws to screw it into the sides so that it stayed affixed. Then we took the modeling clay and we produced thin layers of clay. Uh, it's easily more easily uh, molded when it's warm. So if you warm it up a little bit then you can uh, easily flatten it out and it's fairly inexpensive. You can get it in any craft store. So what I did here is uh, made flat sheets. Uh, sometimes it's useful to have a roller. And I just have a piece of PVC pipe here that I use as a roller to roll it out into sheets. I also have some simple clay working tools um, that allow us, uh, these are potter's tools, and they allow you to make cuts in the clay uh, or shape the clay as you wish. Um, initially, you may find something like this useful. This is a wire, and it's just attached to two pieces of wood as handles. Uh, the wire allows you to cut slabs of the clay, and slabs can be very helpful when you are trying to uh, get the clay thin enough to be able to initially mold it into place. So. The model and the different colors of clay are helpful. Um, I also created, because we have a lot of diking and draining that goes on in our estuary, I created a couple of levees that are removable. They're just big pieces of clay that I can lay in, and I explained to the students that this would be mud removed from the mud flats and side cast to create these levees, and in some cases we do that to place roads. So I just made this simple road uh, painted it up to look like a road, and we can place that into our model. And that shows kind of the functional purpose of that. Now, you can also reverse that process. So in a matter of restoration, uh, you might do something like that and pull the levees out and restore the salt marsh that was uh, filled when they created the, the road. 
So in this case, we're going to put that in. Um, we have salmon in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, salmon are represented here by just a color uh, photocopy that is then cut out and glued to foam core, and it's got a little uh, toothpick in it so that I can place the salmon in the stream. And you can do this with all kinds of different animals. We also have cows, uh, so cows grazing on the, uh, the wetlands or the uh, former wetlands is often the case. And we have fencing here, so this is just a bit of that hardware cloth that I use to represent fencing to show students that if we were to fence out the cattle from the creek and still provide for their water, uh, that improves the conditions for the salmon. And then we also create little models of things like trees so that we can do a riparian planting here to shade the creek. And uh, you can create all kinds of these props at really no cost. In fact, your students can help you out with this. Um, finally, it helps for this activity to have something like this graphic of a watershed and explain uh, from here to the model what's going on so that then we can also use uh, things like an, a map from Google Maps or an aerial photo uh, to explain what a watershed is and even better if they can place themselves in the watershed with the map. So, that's a simple watershed in a box activity and uh, not too expensive to build, certainly under uh, $50 to do that and takes uh, four, four hours or so.